वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय इफ वी आर टू रिलेट द पास टाइम्स ऑफ लॉर्ड रामचंद्र इट कुड टेक अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम This morning we read a summary uh just some main points were touched so usually the system is that hearing a little bit at a time every day and then when you finish you start again generally people think that in the modern age people are very well educated and previously people were not educated well it's true that previously not everyone had that they didn't know how to read and write but previously because people again and again heard rama leela and krishna leela they knew it all by hearing again and again they the, the life or the activities the, the ramayana ramayana literally means the movements of rama that became completely synonymous with their whole being so just Now we'll have the, after this there'll be the drama of Ram Leela okay. which part does that cover the whole all the main important points are covered so what, what are the important points well the birth of rama and not so much happens until he goes out with vishwamitra and he kills tataka and shoots marichi way over along and shoots him up in the air and he lands on the other side of india then he goes up to janakpur and breaks the bow of lord shiva and takes the hand of sita devi even if we just discuss at this level still <laughs> you go on and on and on so anyway uh, i we, we can say what are the important points but what do you think is the important point for koshalya the mother of rama for her the important point is holding little baby rama in her hands and kissing again and again his beautiful face and dressing him and well actually with rama i don't think she ever had to tell him to be not don't be a bad boy because he was always a good boy maybe lakshman was a bit hot headed <laughs> but anyway Uh, and they're all the brothers they're sons of different mothers but they all grew up as brothers so for koshalya just seeing rama my child and feeding him kissing him dressing him seeing him grow up that for her is that is ram leela and actually all the citizens of ayodhya they would have been fully satisfied if everything had gone just on course everything seemed perfect that dasharath in his old he was lamenting i never had any children then all of a sudden in his old age he had well he had one child he had a daughter previously but he had never had any sons and his daughter was already married then uh He had but in his old age he had sons and of course to every mother her son is very beautiful lovable desirable attractive and the prince is loved or is attractive to all the citizens you can see even today in britain there's no real king or queen it's just in name only but still the princes people think they're very important and they're very interested in them so but these princes they were really very special what i'm saying is that every mother thinks that their child is special and in the kingdom every prince is special but actually these boys were exceptional because they're all vishnu avatar 
So they were beautiful, powerful, and everything about them was very pleasing. And uh, Rama, he actually, I was saying, Vishwamitra took him away. Dasarath didn't want him to go. But by uh, killing the demons, even the uh, Rama, he proved himself. Now he's not a boy anymore. Now he's fit to marry. He has to protect the citizens. So he's protecting the rishis in the forest by killing the demons. So Vishwamitra took him away from Ayodhya and Dasharath was very unhappy because the only happiness in his life was Rama. And all the citizens of Ayodhya were unhappy. But when they got the news that Rama has killed the demons and he's won the hand of the impeccably beautiful daughter of Janak Maharaj, then they all became very, very happy. There was no uh, groom suitable for Sita except Ram. And there was no wife suitable for Rama except Sita. So when they were, you were united, the citizens of Ayodhya and of Janakpuri, they were all very, very happy. So it's a very happy story. They came back and then Dasharat decided it's now Rama, he should be the king. I'll retire. And if everything had gone on, everyone would have been very happy. But we might not be discussing Ram Leela now. Because Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya Glani Bhavati Bharata Abhutana Madharmasya Tadatmanam Srijamyaham Paritranaya Sadhu Nam Vinashayata Dushkutam Dharma Sangstapanarthaya Sambhavami Yuga Yuga. The Lord he comes, Vishnu Bhagavan comes in his various forms. Whenever there is a disturbance in the world, he comes to set it right and to uh, annihilate the wicked and to, to uplift the devotees, to re-establish dharma. Bhagavan comes in every age. So, uh, life would have been very happy in Ayodhya, but Rama had come to destroy the demons, especially Ravana. And actually, uh, even if Ram had not gone to the forest and Ravana had not kidnapped Sita, then anyway, in course of time, the news would have reached Ravana that there is this beautiful Sita and anyway he would have come. So anyway, one way or another, the Rama-Ravana fight must have happened. The Ra, one way or another, this way or that way, Rama was going to meet with Ravana. The Sita, she is Lakshmi. She is the very form of beauty, opulence, subservience to Vishnu, intelligence, grace, charm, all good qualities reside in Lakshmi. So the Asuras, they want to take this and use it for themselves. They want to take all the wealth and use it for themselves. So they want to, uh, whatever is beautiful, they want to take and use for themselves. The intelligence which is given to them by Bhagavan, they use it to scheme against Bhagavan. So they take everything which is meant for the service of Bhagavan and they claim it as their own and they, they try to use that against Bhagavan. So anyway, uh, the story was looked like he was going to be very happy, but then there was a sudden twist. It was unthinkable. No one could have even imagined it. How in the middle of such happiness, everyone is very happy, Ram is going to be the king, and all of a sudden everything has changed. And instead of great happiness, there's great distress that Rama has to go and leave the kingdom. And what's even more distressing 
is that his own mother caused this problem because Kaikei was he, he was she was always considered just the same. If someone behaves badly towards you, then naturally you feel distressed. But if your own mother acts against you, you can't imagine. You can imagine anything, but you can't imagine that your mother would act spitefully toward you. Of course, nowadays abortion is very common, but they by they've linguistically manipulated it so they don't say that it's the mother killing the child. They use some language like removal of fetal tissue or something like that. But at least in the pure Vedic culture, no one can imagine that the mother would turn against the child. So all of a sudden, all the happiness turned to distress. In technical terms, the main mood of Rama Lila is Karuna Rasa, or in English that's called pathos. It seems very sad, but actually it's all happiness. The pastimes of Bhagavan are all happiness. The happiness of this material world is all sadness. But in spiritual existence there is no sadness. It's all bliss. It's all bliss, anandam. And that we can understand that people, they, they hear Ramayana again and again and again. And they know the story very well. But still they hear it again and again and again. Why is that? Because it is a spiritual attraction. We take great happiness in hearing about Ram. Ramante yogino nante satyananda chidatmani iti rama padena so param brahma vidhiyate. The yogis, they meditate on Rama. They take unlimited pleasure in always remembering Rama. Why? Because Rama is Satyananda. In this material world, the Ananda, it's all Mityananda. But actual happiness is Rama. Because he is Chidatmani, he is purely spiritual. And he is the Supreme Absolute Truth. So, uh, there is no unhappiness in Ram Lila. It's, it's unhappiness, but that unhappiness is actually spiritual bliss. This cannot be actually explained, but it can be experienced and appreciated. So we invite you to uh, please spend your life hearing about the pastimes of Rama, Krishna, Varaha, Vamana, Narasimha. Nowadays there are many TV programs, soap, they're called soaps, right? They're completely useless. No benefit from one of them, even materially and definitely not spiritual. But if we hear Ram Lila, we get all benefit. The mind is perfectly satisfied, the soul is perfectly satisfied. We are purified. That means if we hear Ram Lila, we become free from mundane, calm, crowd, loba, all these things. And we get very good instruction how to live in this world. From Ram Lila especially we learn that we must stick to dharma whatever happens. We also learn that however powerful the demons may be, ultimately Vishnu Bhagavan overcome. That by adharma we can never actually be happy. We'll ultimately be vanquished. We learn that we should uh, stick and stick up and keep our faith in Bhagavan, even if we have to die for them. Just like Jatayu, when he attacked Rama, he knew, I cannot defeat Rama. He knew, but still he attacked. So you may think, well, that was stupid. But even today, we are glorifying Jatayu for that activity. And Lord Rama, even though he is the, uh, the, the king, in the noble Kshatriya race, he performed the funeral rites for a bird, because that bird was a great devotee of him. And the ultimate benefit of hearing Ram Lila and Krishna Lila is that we will develop bhakti. 
and we'll go back to the spiritual world after leaving this body. So now there will be a drama of Ram Lila, just the main points. We have here in the English edition, the Ramayana. So that's, you can read that little bit every day. So these pastimes we can remember by reading, discussing, and seeing the dramas, and also by chanting the names. In this Kali Yuga, the main practice of bhakti is chanting Harinam, especially the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So by hearing the instructions of Krishna Bhagavan in Bhagavad Gita, by hearing the pastimes of Krishna and the pastimes of Rama. Oh. And when we chant the names of Krishna and Rama, all that, Leela, instructions, everything is encapsulated. We, everything we, re, we can remember all in one point, just by chanting the name Krishna, Rama. Srila Prabhupada, he was once discussing in one lecture, about the power of the holy name, that how could Hanuman jump over the ocean? Well, he's a very powerful monkey, no doubt. But where does Shakti come from? It comes from Rama. So you could say, how did he jump? How did he get such strong legs? It wasn't exactly because of strong legs, but because he chanted Jai Rama, and with full faith, Rama carried him over. So, Srila Prabhupada said, we shall chant Jai Rama and jump to the spiritual world. But if we don't have full faith, we might drop in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Jai Rama, woo! And we're, we're saying Rama Nama and looking down at the material world. Then we'll get sucked in. Then we'll fall in the material ocean of birth and death. So, we have to chant. Krishna Nama, Rama Nama with full faith. There are many atheists, especially in Tamil Nadu, who are very envious of Lord Rama. They see that people have faith in Rama and they want to break them. So they'll bring so many stupid arguments. They'll say there's no Rama and all that. We don't care for these people at all. You don't bother with their arguments at all. What idiots they are. They're all the great Acharyas, great Sadhus, and even the ordinary people of India for millions of years are chanting Jai Rama. Are they all fools? No, these people who say there's no Rama, they are all fools. They say there's no scientific evidence that Rama existed. Do you think you'll find Rama in a microscope? Or in a telescope? Or in a test tube? You cannot find Rama in this way. If we have faith in Rama by hearing about him and chanting his names, then he will reveal himself to us. We can experience his mercy in our lives. So don't bother about all these atheistic fools. That is expected in Kali Yoga. So many atheists will come up. But there's no benefit from them whatsoever. The only benefit in life is by Krishna Bhakti, Rama Bhakti. You, you won't get any satisfaction by being materialistic. Instead of trying to imitate Rama, we should try to serve Rama. Then Rama will carry us to the spiritual world very easily and very happily. So we ask you now, you're all residents of Salem, that you come here regularly and join us. We're not establishing this ashram outside the town so we can sit very peacefully on our own. But we want you all to come, especially on these festivals, because we want many, 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 many people will join in the Sankirtan. If there are just a few of us, we feel very lonely. We want everyone will come. Only Ravana won't come. So, you can invite all your friends, and if they don't want to come, you can tell them, then okay, you go and join Ravana. Maybe they will blame you for coming, leaving the family and coming here. Then you have to remember Vibhishana. If, they, if the family tells you don't come, then you'll say, Jai Vibhishana, and come anyway. So, let us all be happy.
That's all. Rama, he only wants us to be happy. But we can't be happy as long as the world is full of Ravana. So in Kali Yuga, everyone almost is a mini Ravana. They don't have ten heads, but they talk so much nonsense as if they had twenty heads. So we have to make counter-propaganda. Ramachandra has come in Kali Yuga as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he asks us to chant the Hare Krishna. These people are talking all nonsense. You just, uh, just, just stop speaking so many things. Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So we can't, there's no question of killing all the Ravanas. But we have to kill the demoniac mentality. By chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, all the people who are very bad and very sinful, they all become great saintly devotees. So this Ram Bhakti, that is meant for everyone. See, Rama, he was uh, worshipped by the Brahmanas, and he also worshipped the Brahmanas. But he also had the Vanaras as his main army, and he very happily accepted the hospitality of Guha, who was, I guess nowadays you would call him a tribal, so in Krishna Bhakti and Rama Bhakti, there's no casteism. Caste, there is, for organization of society, some people are priests, some people are kings, some people are merchants, some people are workers. But that's just for organization of society. That's not for hatred. Just like you'll see here in our ISKCON center, all the devotees are coming together. There's no question who's this caste, that caste, no such thing. No question, no consideration. We don't ask you how much money do you have, then only you can come. We don't ask you how high educational qualification you have. No, everyone please come and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. So that is the way that Rama accepted everybody. Ravana was very high class actually, he's son of a Brahmin. Very wealthy, very uh, highly qualified, intelligent, but he was a rakshas. But Guha was uh, living in the forest, in the jungle, but he is, had an attitude of pure bhakti to Rama and Rama accepted. So according to our previous life's activities, someone is born in a very rich family, someone is very born in a poor family, and so on. Krishna, he doesn't care about. He sees this person, he's born in a rich family, he's very proud of that. But in a previous life, he was some ant. So Krishna just sees in our heart how much we actually want to serve him and love him. So Rama has come in this Kali Yoga as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ram? He just asks everyone to chant the Mahamantra. Who was Rama? Who was Krishna? He has come again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So let us now uh, see the Ram Leela drama and be happy remembering Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And for afterward we'll serve prasadam. Just we'll go to the forest and get some, pull some roots out of the ground. Is that all right? Rama was living in the forest eating roots. Well, no, we'll serve more like <coughs> Ayodhya style. <laughs> we don't want to see the devotees of Rama performing so many austerities. So chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And be happy.